Dear students, welcome back to the organ printing course. So in the last few lectures, so we have discussed different types of 3D bioprinting technologies like inkjet bioprinting, extrusion based bioprinting and laser assisted bioprinting. And also we have discussed in great detail about all these different technologies, what are the different, what are the characteristics or the important features of these technologies, uh, what are the different components of these different bioprinters and also the advantages and disadvantages of these technologies and all and also in the last lecture we have discussed in great detail about the comparison of different 3d bioprinting technologies like all the in terms of all process parameters different other characteristics and also lastly the advantages and disadvantages of all these different technologies when while discussing the disadvantages of the, all these different techniques one thing was very clear that these three different techniques they have a common feature that is like the when we are trying to produce a complex microstructure then we need to provide support to the complex structure otherwise we cannot print a very complex structure mostly we are able to print a lamellar or a planar structure very well but whenever there is a hanging geometry or a complex shape is there complex shape is there then that time that printing technology is not capable enough to print that intricate microstructure or the complex geometry as such. Most of, most of the time the material that when we print the material after printing the material collapse a little bit collapse and or they cannot retain the shape of the structure. That is because in 3D bioprinting mostly we use different types of we mostly use different types of hydrogels, aqueous based gels and we can and also like we have we have seen that or we have discussed that that we cannot use the very high viscous bioing because if the material is very high viscous then the cell viability is can can be an issue so that's why mostly we use low, low to moderate viscous bioing so in this lecture we'll discuss a recent development on this bioprinting technology that is 3D bioprinting in support bath. So we will see why this last two words support bath, support bath is important, what is the purpose of the support bath and how, what, what, why we need a support bath basically. Before that let us again revisit the drawbacks of the conventional bioprinting method like we have seen this like in all this either it can be inkjet printing or it can be extrusion based bioprinting or it can be laser assisted bioprinting everywhere the bioprinting is done mostly on the print bed or it is culture plate or a substrate right so where we have a substrate and then on the substrate we print the material we print on the substrate so that the structure can be built on the directly on the tissue culture plate on any on a petri dish anywhere but mostly please uh, please note this that the, whenever we print this we print on the stage so where the support is mostly provided by the print bed or the digital culture plate right we cannot print anything like on air and mostly the thing will be the uh, mostly the layers will attach to the print bed okay so there is unless we provide any support we cannot print any structure that is a non planar structure or that has some suppose suppose a pyramid like structure where this part will be hanging so so this part if unless we provide some support to this hanging geometry we cannot print a structure like a predestined stru structure that has complex geometry that has non planar surface right so that is one of the main drawback of this conventional bioprinting method so due to the, that what are the structures if you see in the in your in literature with conventional bioprinting method mostly they are very simple they are a very limited complexity of microstructure and 3d anisotropy present in those structures but to mimic the real native tissue is where the microstructure is very complex it has a 3d anisotropic structure unless we mimic that in our bioprinting method we cannot achieve that function that cannot achieve that particular tissue or organ specific functions. So that's why this 
complexity of microstructure and 3D anisotropy, these are, these are key words where we need to mimic that tissue in terms of these two properties. And most of the current bioprinted structures are simple lattice structures, like these are like 0 90, 0 90 degree angle, first layer is printed at 0 degree angle, suppose this is at an angle and then the next layer with 90 degree to that preceding layer or any other angle. So basically we can mostly a printed square lattices are being printed with this same conventional bioprinted structures. To print a complex structure is, uh, is very challenging with the conventional bioprinting technique. But these simple lattice structures, they basically they do not recapitulate the microstructure of the native tissue. That means that microstructure, real microstructure is missing in the conventional bioprinted structures. And if we cannot mimic that structure, we cannot gain the function or we cannot regain or re-establish the function of that particular tissue structure in a bioprinted construct. So that's why mimicking the microstructure of the native tissue, native tissue and the anisotomy of the native tissue is very important. So that's why controlling microstructure and anisotropy in 3D is the ultimate goal of all tissue engineering, all bioprinting approaches so that we can actually uh, mimic the native tissue structure and we can gain the function. So because if we can actually produce a structure with produce the tissue with a real microstructure, native tissue mimicking, by mimicking micro type microstructure and anisotropy, we will be able to gain the, we will be able to reproduce the function of the tissue in that bioprinted structure. If we cannot do that, then it is not possible. So that's why there is a, this development happened like started from around 2011 when the first, pa first, uh, first paper, research paper came out on this process where when somebody has 3D printed a structure in a support bath, that means where the structure, bioprinted structure is basically embedded within the support bath. Now we see why basically we need a support bath. As in the last slide, I have discussed that the support is very much required for to print a complex geometry, non basically to print a non-planar geometry, support bath is very much required. Because most of the time these hydrogels, the biological hydrogels or aqueous based gel, bioing, they are very challenging to 3D print because the mechanical property or the viscosity of that material is very very low like they are less than 100 kPa. The elastic modulus of those hydrogels are mostly less than 100 kPa. So that's why with this low very slow soft hydrogel, soft biological hydrogels, 3D printing is a real challenge and one way to tackle this is if we can introduce some cross-linking or gelation during the fabrication process that is in situ gelation during the fabrication process that is required to maintain the shape and structure maintain the shape and size of the structure okay otherwise what will happen the structures will deform or collapse after printing the structure if it is if the, if the hydrogel is very soft after printing or after after the fabrication is done then they will just collapse or they will deform due to their own body weight right so that that is the main challenge when printing with very soft hydrogels so main challenge is to prevent the material from changing shape after shape after placement so that's what when we print the structure suppose when the material comes out of comes out through the nozzle or any 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 other way that time what will happen that the we print the material but the material after some the material starts collapsing collapse and and it can deform so that deformation happen because of that the structural resolution or even the printed uh, printing fidelity is not that great so in 3d printing always there is a challenge to, to tackle the, this instability what is the instability here? The source of main instability in case of bioprinting up with soft jet hydrogel as the because this hydrogel they are very soft. They have they are like a they are they are like aqueous base mostly they are aqueous base gels where surface tension of the material plays a big role because surface tension what surface tension does surface tension drives the material. Suppose we printed a line 
but if the material has a high surface tension what will happen that will drive the material towards sphere because sphere is the low energy state so surface tension always drives the material towards this low energy state so that's why if it's, if they print a material with high aspect ratio that will that will just collapse and it will probably we can end up with getting a spheres other other thing is because of the body forces and due to the gravity driven force that the if we suppose if we print a line or say if suppose if we print a filament or line a cylindrical line that collapses because of the gravity driven sag and buckling so these are the main challenges while printing with support bath so that's what we need a support bath to provide support to the printed structures specifically specifically printed structures with low viscous or low modulus soft hydrogels these are the few characteristics of this uh, support bath or 3d printing in support bath that whole concept support bath is a basically support bath most of the support bath is made up of some materials that act like a bingham plastic during the print process what is a bingham plastic bingham plastic is when the material behaves like a rigid body or solid like structure solid structure when there is no shear low no shear rate or very less shear stress okay suppose if the material is just kept as as such then the material will not flow there will be no flow the material will behave like a, almost like a solid if there is no force applied on the material or if there is a very little force or very little shear stress applied on the material but the that same material will start flow when the applied shear stress really reach a certain level that means at very shear, low shear rate the material will not flow but if i increase the shear rate shear stress or the force then the material will start flowing so that that is what a bingham plastic material like so that so what it so because of this what happens whenever like suppose in case of extrusion based fire printing what happens whenever we move suppose we put the nozzle in nozzle we did not suppose at the beginning we do not put the nozzle inside the support bath that time the support bath material will be like solid but when we insert the, our nozzle of the extrusion bath printing nozzle if we when we insert inside the support bath material what will happen that time if we at very low shear rate again that that support bath material will behave like a solid but when we start moving the nozzle when we apply some stress stress and if our stress stress reach that critical stress just remember critical stress that is called yield stress then the material will the support bath material will start flowing so it will provide space for this nozzle to flow right so that's what happened so nozzle moves through the bath and the support bath material started to flow after that what happened the extrusion of out, out of the nozzle and deposition of the hydrogen within the bath so as soon as whenever the nozzle moves within the bath it creates a space within the bath right within the, the support bath material and the support bath material just flow because because of this because the here the shear stress is more than the critical yield stress so that time what will happen the heat the material from the nozzle the material the structural material that or the hydrogel or the bioing that will extrude out we can extrude that material out and that can be deposited within the support bath structure and again when the nozzles move away nozzle moves away after that what will happen again the material this support bath material they will again come back to this original position or they will just encapsulate the print by by printed structures a by printed structure or by printed that line suppose any shape or size that structure will be, it will encapsulate and again it will be like a solid structure so because again it will be like a solid so it can provide support to the deposited material so that what happens in case of 3d printing in support bath the nozzle whenever we insert the nozzle we started moving the nozzle so the support bath material moves started started to flow they give space to the nozzle to move and also give space to the deposited material to come out and that then again when the nozzle moves away then again they come back to the original position and then they again they behave like a solid material and then provide support to the deposited material so that is what happens in case of 3d printing support bath now after whole the whole process is done how can we remove the support bath material now mostly the support bath materials we use some support material that they can be removed by various ways one is the one 
one way to remove that suppose we use it some thermo reversible material that means the mat that material behaves like a gel like structure gel behaves like a gel at certain temperature and above above a critical temperature they behave like liquid so that kind of material we can very well use for this as a support bath material also if the support bath material is also water soluble or above soluble in buffer or media then we can wash simply wash them think wash them in a non destructive manner and then that can be very well removed so this is the whole in a, in a way whole concept of 3d printing in support bath now this is a this 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 image here this figure clearly shows you what actually happened like suppose here there is a support bath material in this particular literature they have used gelatin microgel as a support bath material now remember gelatin behaves like a thermo reversible material as i earlier so i mentioned it has a critical transition temp transition temperature near 30 degree centigrade so below 30 it will behave like a gel above 30 it will be behave like a liquid material so that's what happens here and another thing is now gelatin microgel also behave like a bigham plastic and bigham plastic from this graph you can clearly see any newtonian fluid newtonian fluid where there is no ill stress present in the newtonian fluid so here at zero shear rate stress also that is stress as we increase the shear rate the shear stress keep on increasing and it is linearly increasing so that is a that is the property of the being linearly newtonian liquid but in case of bingham plastic liquid what happens you see at zero shear rate there is no flow there no shear stress being there but when the when the shear stress at zero shear stress there is no flow but when the shear stress increases to certain value like till here no flow of the material is happening so no shear rate if you see but after certain after a after certain in shear stress then it starts flowing but again after that it is almost proportional to the shear stress and shear rate is proportional right linearly increases but still a certain stress value there is no flow of the material so that is called yield stress right so that's what happening here now here this support bath material and this is the hydrogel material or bio wing that is coming through the that is getting extruded through the this extrusion by this bio print extrusion based bio printing nozzle then what will happen then the when the material comes out here then at the first this in, in, in needle will be inserted within this hydro support bath right and then when the needle moves within this support at the beginning there is no flow of the support bath material so it is behaving like behaving like a solid right but now when i start moving this needle or the nozzle within the support bath it can the support bath material they will they withstand the flow or withstand the pressure up to a certain level till that critical till that yield stress after that critical value then the nozzle when the nozzle moves then the nozzle can able to move and the support bath material will will also start flowing and they behave like a liquid like material so but that liquid material behavior can be visualized or can be present in a localized manner whenever this force is being applied there only the material will start behaving like liquid material so then the nozzle can flow and the material and the also then that nozzle can deposit the hydrogel material within the support bath and after this movement is done like suppose here the this thing is getting deposited right so after this movement here again this support bath material again again they will come back to the original position or or they will encapsulate the hydrogel material that is getting deposited so just a minute let me switch on the so support bath material the here it will be deposited deposit getting deposited and after the nozzle moves away then it is again the support bath material will come back to this original position and they will encapsulate the deposited material and then we can able to the hydrogel will be very much supported by this support bath right that's why these are called support bath they will support the hydrogel material because at that stage they are behaving like a solid right then so so in this so by inserting this nozzle again just taking out the nozzle one layer up then putting the next layer so like this we can any kind of structure can be created like this here if you see they have created first layer that is printed second layer another layer another some is already printed and the third layer and third or fourth or simultaneously the whole structure is printed within this support bath material 
so this is the beauty of this technique where it provides support to the hydrogel material and this hydrogel material is very soft hydrogel and after this the release can be done as i mentioned this gelatin behaves like a ten thermos reversible material so above 30 again when you are 37 degrees centigrade the gelatin will be liquefied and then it can get it can be removed easily from this printed structures and by that time the sub this printed structure can also get solidified and also get get so the, if we can introduce we can introduce some cross linking some gelatin mechanism here so that the support that material can also or sorry the hydrogel can also get gelated so this is the main now what are the different what are the important properties of this support bath material this support bath or suspension media that is that will display solid like characteristic in the absence of an applied stress or a very low stresses right so that is the very first thing you should remember the very first important first important property of the support bath material it should have a it should not just flow by any by without any applied pressure or at very low stresses also it should not flow so they display a solid like characteristics and when the shear stress applied at certain at critical above a critical yield shear stress that is called yield stress after that the start material call started the support bath material starts yielding that's what the support bath or suspension bath material start yielding so that is the that means it started to flow so that's why that in so that the, again any application of shear stress that can render the material liquid like other important property is the self filling property of this suspension bath material suspension bath or support bath material that means the support bath microstructure spontaneously recovers after the moment of the nozzle or deposition of the structure that means when the painting is done the deposition is done that time they again the support bath material microstructure they will again come back okay come back to their original position and also or they will encapsulate the printed structures and then that can then again they show that then again they will behave like a solid and they can provide support to the to printed structure so this is these are the important properties support bath now in this video to i have two videos to show you what is the important requirement of a support bath why 3d bioprinting is support bath is very important for this thing now in the first video you can clearly see when actually i we are trying to print with a very soft hydrogel like in this case also we try to print a very soft hydrogel if you see here clearly no structure can be this getting printed it's only that because this is very soft material and due to the surface tension as i already mentioned that it is getting the drop is getting bigger and bigger so no structure real structure is present in this case right only the drop is getting bigger and bigger due to this because we cannot because of the low viscous a low modulus bowing we cannot able to make a structure but the same bowing same viscous or same modulus bowing low viscous same or bowing i am printing in a support bath suppose this is support bath material and i am printing a support bath the support bath is actually providing support to the print structure here it is this again they are not coming together as a drop they maintain the print support printed the structural fidelity or the printing fidelity is maintained here in this case if you see they can maintain the shape of the structure or because in this case because this material support bath material providing support to the printed structure so that we can i can able to print a very good structure with the same viscous or same modulus bowing so that's the beauty of this thing so any kind of complex geometry i can create within the support bath material and then this the support bar material can provide support to the structure and i can create a very good geometry so with this thing we can able we could print a print a, a tubular structure a structure with this kind of hydrogel with the soft hydrogel we can print a tubular structure so that's that's the that's the advantage or that's the that's why this 3d bar printing in support bar is so powerful so that we can print very complex geometry also can be printed within the, with this with this technique technique and so that this technique can be very well used as i already mentioned in the last slides that the printing complex microstructure printing 3d anisotropy printing all these things are very much possible and if you see in literature you will find some examples of using this technology for different applications different applications like uh, recently in last to last year there was a important breakthrough where 
from Israel, Tel Aviv University, some researcher, they have printed a human four chamber, human heart like structure with this, with a hydrogel, with a very soft hydrogel using this support bath. So using this 3D bioprinting and support bath, they have created a human heart, four chamber heart like structure where it has this all the, all the, all, all the chambers are present and also the architecture is very, architecture structure is very, very similar to the heart tissue. So that's the advantage of using this support bath material. Here also you can see, we can create a cylindrical structure. The structure is very much stable. All the structure is really, the height is more like, it's almost like a five to six mm height of the structure or more than that probably. But we could able to make a three dimensional structures with this thing with support bath material. Now, what are the different types of support bath materials that are available? One important thing is the support bath material should behave like a, it should be, it should not be like any other material. It should be behave like a Bingham plastic. That means at very, low temperature that thing uh, the material should behave like a solid low no, no not temperature, low shear stress the material should behave like a solid and up beyond a critical stress or yield stress that material should behave like a liquid so these all are the different support bath material that has been used for thing like gelatin micro gel people have developed a gelatin gelatin is a bipolymer now they have with a special technique, they have created this gelatin microgel. Microgel is mean where this gelatin gel typically uh, micron size, some ten, tens, ten, tens of microns or less size microns, so like 10 to 50 or maybe some uh, 70 micron, 30 micron part, micro particles of gelatin micro particles that is suspended in the or suspended in, the, in some uh, suppose the aqueous buffer and then so gelatin microgel so that behaves like again the behaves like that kind of support bath material that can be all well be used for providing support bath again there are some design advantages like gelatin micro particles suspended in oxidized alginate so that is another support bath material people have used similarly silica nanoparticles also people have used as a similar different suspension suspension of different materials can also be used as a support bath materials fluoronics Pluronix is another support bath material. Pluronix is another important thing is the pluronix is a thermosensitive material similar to gelatin. Gelatin is a thermoreversal material. Pluronix is also a thermoreversal material. So, the, but the, the property is it is opposite to the gelatin. It is below, below, below 20 degree, it behaves like a liquid, above 20, it behaves like a gel. So, that's why this material is also a very good material for the printing the support bath, printing structure and be, is using as, as a support bath. So, the first application of this uh, 3D bioprinting support bath where the research, the first research group, they have used pluronic as a support bath material. When laponite can play, that is also another support bath material can be used. Carbopol is another popular support bath material. So these all are the support bath material that people use for different, different, different applications. So that's, that's why, uh, that's the, and if you, I encourage you to go through some literatures and you can find enough examples of this enough examples of this 3d bioprinting in support bath material and for different applications people have started using and the application of this technology in, in different fields like will also be different uh, uh, 3d complex geometry uh, people have tried printing like the mm -hmm. vascular network vascular network is a very complex structures right? that is very difficult to create with any other conventional bioprinting but with this with this uh, 3D printing and support bath, people have tried actually tried to make this complex 3D complex geometry or uh, this vascularized vascular network is very much print can be printed and people have shown that it can be printed and it can be used. Similar different applications are there. Please go through the recent literature. I will also share some literature, some links for some literatures in the later classes. Thank you very much again for attending this lecture, attending this lecture. In the lec we will again meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much.